All right, click Create a New Xcode Project. And then under Mac OS X, we're going to make sure application is selected. And we're going to create a command line tool application. Click Next. Type in the project name, which we're going to call Hello World. Find Programming Tradition. And then make sure something's in the company identifier. Next, we're going to select Foundation. And make sure automatic reference counting is checked. Next, click Next. And we're going to create this wherever we feel like. Now once it's created, we're going to look at main.m, and we'll see that Xcode already generated a little program for us. See what this program does? Just click Run, top left corner. And this should output something to the output menu that's going to come up, and there it did. Hello world, our very first program, already typed for us. Now let's make a little modification. My name is Ken, or whatever your name is, and we'll see that the output window also modifies to reflect the change. Now what NSLog basically does is it logs things to this output window. It's very handy for debugging programs and to seeing how variables change throughout the life of a program and to see what part of the program you're currently running. So we start with NSLog, everything is in parentheses, then we give it an at symbol to let it know we're going to pass a string. Everything in that string needs to be in quotation marks and then we end with parentheses and a semicolon. Now let's just delete this little comment here, the way you comment Xcode is by two forward slashes, but this is a pretty simple program. And we'll create a first variable, integer test variable is what we're going to call it. So the data type integer, and it's the name is going to be test variable. We use a lowercase t, which is just a typical convention in Objective C. And make sure we put a semicolon at the end of the declaration. Now this little warning here says we have an unused variable, and that's because Xcode doesn't like us to make variables that we don't use. So let's go ahead and use it for something. NSLog and Xcode kind of figure out what we wanted to put, so all we had to do is put enter and it gave us kind of a blank shell for this command. So at sign, because we're going to use a string, and quotation marks, and the test variable is percent %i. Now, when we say test variable at the first part of the string, we're not actually calling the actual variable itself, it's just a string of characters. So that's why we put that percent %i and then t the actual variable outside of the string. Because everything in the quotation marks is just a string of characters. It doesn't call any variables or anything like that. So for an integer, we have to signify, hey, get this integer from outside the string by using that percent %i symbol. Very simple, very easy to understand. And let's make sure we put a semicolon at the end of that. Now if we click Run, see an output window. That's 100. Change it to 1,000, and we can see how our variable has changed. It be very useful when you're writing larger programs to see how the variable changes throughout the cycle of the program. All right, now we're going to do a simple for statement. Start typing for, and then hit enter. Xcode kind of figure out what we want. Now we're going to need a variable that uses a counter. I could use test variable, but I'm going to create a new one. Now I started to think I wanted to type some other stuff with count, but so I'm just going to hit escape, and that gives me exactly what I typed. So. As long as count equals between 0 and 4, we want this thing to execute. So we're initialize count at 0, and then type count less than 4. So while it's between that set of numbers, this thing will execute in a basic loop. And we type plus plus count to increase the count, the variable count, every single time it runs. So it'll go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. And that's log, and we type basic string. The count is percent sign i and then we call the count variable. And make sure everything, of course, is ended with a semicolon. And there we go. Now you'll see it actually executed five times, because of course in programming, we count the number zero as a number. So we'll just create that, make that three, and now it'll execute four times just the way we want it. Now we'll very quickly run through a quick if statement. So basically type if, and then hit enter, and it'll give us kind of a shell. And what this is going to do is it evaluates a condition. So if test variable is, let's say, greater than 100, we want something to happen. So we start by typing, actually make sure it's correct, the greater symbol than the equals, 100. And then whatever we want to happen will happen in between those curly brackets. So we'll just do a little NS log that says uh, the test variable is greater than 100. So if the test variable is greater than 100, in our output window, we should see that little NS log statement. And there we go. 
There it is. Now let's say we want to know if it's less than 100. So we type else if, and in parentheses, test variable, less than, equal sign, 100. And then we have to create our own little curly brackets here. I usually like to create them there, right there, there at the end of the parentheses. And Xcode creates a second one for me. So I just put in a log, and we'll say the test variable is less than 100. There we go, end it in a semicolon. So let's make it 10, and this output should change, and there it is. It says less than 100. Now finally, just a good programming practice, let's say the test variable is neither of those things. We're going to create kind of a catch-all statement, which we use just an else. So if none of those other statements above are true, it'll output this to the output window. And if it's an integer, obviously it's going to be greater than or less than 100, so we'll just say test variable is not an integer. This lets us know if something went wrong. And that's it. That's our first program.